What is up my friends, how's it going? Welcome to the fourth episode of the Tactical Guide series with your fellow comrade Summary. In the last few episodes, we had covered the basics of macroscopic combat mechanics, namely detailed unit stats, army compositions, asymmetric compositions to counter a superior enemy, army deployment and macro management tips. For those of you who haven't watched those episodes, I strongly recommend giving it a go. Link in the description down below. For the rest of you, we are now finally in a position to dive into the micromanagement tips and my personal recommendation on how to best use the different types of units in the game. In this episode, we will be covering our very first unit type, Elephants. Like many units in the game, there are a lot of stats that are hidden when it comes to Elephants. But today is your lucky day as I will be covering those stats and more. Firstly, when it comes to Elephants, there are two major classifications to consider. The Elephant Entity and the Elephant Class. First up, let's cover the different Elephant Entities in-game. You have four different Elephant Entities. From the lowest to the best, they are the African Elephant with a unit mass of 280 and an HP of 800, the Atlas Elephant with a unit mass of 295 and an HP of 850. Next up, we have the Indian Elephant with a unit mass of 310 and an HP of 900. And finally, we have the Indian Armored Elephants with a unit mass of 330 and an HP of 900. Most of you who have watched my previous videos will know just how important these stats are, with HP determining how much damage an entity can sustain before dying on the battlefield, while unit mass when multiplied with charge speed, which in the case of elephants is 7, determines the impact damage of the charge. It goes without saying that the higher these values, the better. And now that we have covered the different elephant entities in game, let us talk about elephant class. By elephant class, I do not mean whether they are light, medium, heavy, very heavy or super heavy elephants. All of these are purely aesthetic and do not change the attributes of the entities themselves. When it comes to elephant class, I simply mean to say if they are melee or ranged elephant types. With the latter being superior as you now have two avenues of damage being dealt whilst in combat. With melee damage being dealt by the elephant itself and missile damage being dealt by the rider atop the elephant. So based on these two classifications, let us now hop on to the next section of this video which is my personal opinion on the top 5 elephants in game. At 5th place we have the African War Elephants of the Mesesli. These are of the African Elephant Entity and have 44 elephants in the unit. They are a missile elephant class and so they have the double avenue for damage dealing. As for the stats, they have a melee attack of 6, a melee defense of 4, an armor of 4. For melee damage, they have a weapon damage of 17 and an armor penetration of 5. For missile damage, they have a base damage of 16 and an armor penetration of 8. At 4th place, we have the Carthaginian Atlas Elephants. These are of the Atlas Elephant Entity and have 36 elephants in the unit. They are also a Missile Elephant class. As for the stats, they have a melee attack of 8, a melee defense of 8, and an armor of 10. For melee damage, they have a weapon damage of 18 and an armor penetration of 6. For missile damage, they have a base damage of 16 and an armor penetration of 8. Coming up next in third place, we have the Indian Armored Elephants of the Seleucids. These are of the Indian Armored Elephant Entity and have 36 elephants in the unit. They are also a Missile Elephant class. 
As for the stats, they have a melee attack of 8, a melee defense of 8, and an armor of 10. For melee damage, they have a weapon damage of 18 and an armor penetration of 6. For missile damage, they have a base damage of 18 and an armor penetration of 5. In second place, we have the Mauryan Towered Elephants. These are of the Indian Armored Elephant Entity and have 48 elephants in the unit. They are also a Missile Elephant class. As for the stats, they have a melee attack of 8, melee defense of 8, and an armor of 10. For melee damage, they have a weapon damage of 18, and an armor penetration of 6. For missile damage, they have a base damage of 20, and an armor penetration of 6. And finally, in first place, which comes as no surprise to any of you who have watched my Let's Play Morian series, we have the Morian Royal Elephants. These are of the Indian Armored Elephant Entity and have 48 elephants in the unit. They are also a Missile Elephant class. As for the stats, they have a melee attack of 8, melee defense of 8, and an armor of 12. For melee damage, they have a weapon damage of 18 and an armor penetration of 6. For the missile damage, they have a base damage of 20 and an armor penetration of 6. Some honorable mentions in descending order of quality are the AOR Morian War Elephants available in the provinces of Bactria and Maka, the AOR Syrian War Elephants available in the provinces of Syria and Palmyra, and the Indian mercenary elephants available in the province of Bactria and Maka. These do not make the list as they are not readily available as part of a base unit rosters of the factions. However, should you play as a faction without elephants in the roster, these are some pretty good options you can go for. And now, let us move on to the final section of the video, which is the micromanagement tips that I personally use when it comes to elephant units in the game. Alright, so before we hop into the battle, I am very quickly going to share with you guys the battlefield that I usually use for my testing. You can pause the video right here in order to copy down the coordinates. This is a desert map which gives good lighting and it is a very flat terrain with no obstacles like trees and rocks. There are a few however, they are extremely rare on this map so I really do like this map and for those of you interested in doing some testing of your own, you can go ahead and copy these coordinates. However, for the testing, before we can test any elephant units, one of the main purposes for those of you who have seen my Morian series will understand that I use elephants to help low tier cavalry face off against high tier cavalry and just to show you how low tier cavalry would get absolutely destroyed by high tier cavalry I am going to run a very quick simulation over here by selecting the Indian Auxiliary Cavalry they are a light shock type cavalry with only 18 armor nothing fancy over here and I am going to put them up against the Parthians. And I am going to select the Parthian late bodyguard. It does have a, like, it is one of the best shock cavalry in the game. And more on that when we actually cover cavalry as a unit type. Uh, however, some of the stats that you can look at for the Parthian late bodyguards is that they have incredible melee attack and damage, crazy charge bonus insane amount of armor and of course they are the Nicene horse breed which is the best horse breed in the game more on that on our cavalry video but without any further ado let us hop right into the battle and i will show you what happens when you use a light cavalry against a heavy cavalry i mean it shouldn't come as a shocker we are going to get absolutely obliterated and then i will show you how even the lowest tier elephants can pretty much be a major game changer Alright, so here we are in the battle. I am quickly going to start the battle. And we are going to charge against uh, the Parthian late bodyguard. And uh, 
Things are not going to go so well for us, as you will see shortly. We do have 100 men in our cavalry unit versus the 120. And this cavalry is pretty much going to get absolutely destroyed. I mean, they have no chance against this uh, heavy cataphract type unit. And straight off the bat, you can see right on the charge, we have lost a significant amount. There we go, 84, 83 units. And they haven't lost a single unit. So very quickly going to fast forward over here. And as you can see, we still haven't gotten any, any kills. And we have finally gotten one kill. And with that, you can see we have fairly lost that engagement. So now, very quickly, we are going to include an elephant unit into the mix. And we are going to see how this changes the dynamics of that engagement. So straight off the bat, you might say, yeah, well, two versus one is obviously going to be a lot more powerful. However, keep in mind, you are kind of... Uh, always going to try to play a numbers game you have to kind of counter an enemy unit especially if it's an elite unit with a combination of units battles are pretty much all about local superiority in certain regions as i have explained in my asymmetric uh, army compositions guide on how to counter a superior foe you really don't want to you know go toe to toe with an enemy especially if they are of a better class and you definitely want to kind of shift the favor in your odds. And one way to do this with low tier cavalry is to have elephant units into the mix. So let's go ahead quickly hop into the battle. All right, welcome to the battle. I have arranged my elephants and cavalry in the formation that I want to deploy them in order to counter the enemy cavalry over there. Ideally, I want to charge in with my elephants first as elephants are fantastic at breaking a charge. And then I want to follow that up with a charge of my own using my significantly inferior cavalry. So let's just quickly go ahead, start the battle and put in our elephants to attack that unit. Keep in mind that when elephants do charge a unit because of the gap in between the elephants, that unit will kind of go slightly behind the elephant unit so you want to be safe you don't want the cavalry behind to be too close otherwise they will still get charged by this unit and now that the elephants are almost engaged here we go as you can see the elephants are going to charge they're going to break that charge and as you can see they kind of overshot a bit but now they are engaged my elephants haven't taken any casualties and straight off the bat i am going to charge with my low tier cavalry and as you will see there will be some damage being dealt to this enemy unit i haven't taken any losses quickly gonna hit that j key move my cavalry immediately out of combat and as you can see this unit is already beginning to lose decisively once my cavalry is out quickly select that charge once again we are going to cycle charge this unit a lot and that should deal a significant amount of damage to the unit. Keep in mind this is a heavily armored unit and we are still doing quite well. Still haven't lost a single cavalry. Going to cycle charge again. Quickly tap that J key. For most of you who have seen my previous video you will know that this short key is fairly useful. This cavalry is deciding to give chase. We're going to move out of the way. Try to follow this up with our elephant charge. But as you can see, we have fairly significantly dealt off with the enemy. They're not going to be able to deal with us. And straight off the bat, we are going to win this. And once again, just charge in with my cavalry. I am going to fast forward now. You guys pretty much get the, get the idea of what happens. And as you can see, they have lost the battle. And we have gotten significant amount of kills. Of course, our elephants have dealt a lot more damage. But as you can see, a benefit of these cavalry is that they are lighter, they are quicker. And they should be able to get a lot of the kills on this cavalry as it retreats. So yeah, there you go. That's how you can kind of use elephants on the flank to support your low tier cavalry against elite cavalry. All right, next up, we are going to test how to use elephants to rear charge the enemy. 
front lines and for that we are going to do a quick test against shield bearers of the Seleucids and our very own Morian armored spearmen using our Morian royal elephants to perform rear charges and to see which method gets the highest kills in the shortest amount of times with elephants. Keep in mind elephant units have incredibly high mass so they can easily move through units and ideally the lighter the unit the more juicier they are as the target because your elephants will be able to just ignore them it's it will be like they don't even exist however the shield bearers are quite heavy units so let's say you are facing off against an army that is fairly mixed in composition you have a couple of lighter troops like so your priority should pretty much be to rear charge these units first and then finally the shield bearers However, without any further ado, let's hop right into the battle and I will show you how to use elephants against a front line of infantry. Alright, welcome to the battle. I have set my front line up and I am going to march them up ahead slowly. I'm going to fast forward over here. Move our elephants also slowly. Quickly going to lock the formation of group 2. Stop our elephants. Alright. These guys are almost in position. Get them here. Now our elephants can kind of move around in order to... I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Rear charging isn't all that difficult to do. However, there is a technique. And for most of you who have seen my Let's Play Morian series, you will know that I like to keep my formations a bit more narrow. And I will tell you the reason why as soon as the front line engages. All right, now that the front line has engaged, if I keep my formation wide like this, and I'm going to quickly pause the video over here, and let's say I charge into this unit, then there is a chance that some of these units on the far right or the far left might kind of engage these units before I actually charge into this unit, and I will lose my charge bonus as this unit will kind of stop in its position uh, as the elephants original intended target was this unit so for that reason you do want to keep your formation as narrow as possible however not too narrow and a way you want to attack this unit is kind of like i know this is a bit micro intensive and you won't be able to do it that well in the heat of a battle however you do want to target isolated units like these over here versus a big blob over here and after you charge into this unit, you want to quickly come back, charge into this unit, quickly come back, charge back into this unit. You want to cycle your charges as much as you can with elephant units. So let's just quickly go ahead, put up our elephants in that tighter formation. I used to previously lock my elephants into formation. However, that causes a lot of glitches with elephant units. So we are quickly just going to charge over here, keeping the tooltip open so that you can see the amount of kills they get quickly charge out and you need to double tap over here as you can see that unit is already retreating now that we are out we are going to quickly charge into this unit we need to move a little bit more this elephant is in combat get it out charge into the further unit in or if in case you do get blocked kind of like this you're going to charge into that further unit quickly move out As you can see, the elephants are racking up some nice kills. Just quickly fast forward over here. Hit that. You want to keep your elephants moving because they also do some damage while they move. And pretty much that's how you quickly wipe out any unit or any front line. However, if you just charge your elephants and leave them in place, eventually over time they are going to get bogged down. And slowly and steadily they will take more and more damage to their unit and you will start to lose a couple of elephant units and i hate losing even a single elephant unit because each and every single elephant unit is so powerful that even if you consider 48 is now down to 46 that is a significant uh, debuff to your entire army that is a significant setback to your entire army so you want to keep elephants always on the move you don't want them to stay stationary unless, of course, you are trying to pin down a unit like I showed in the previous example against cavalry units. Alright, let's move on to the next example of elephants. 
In this next segment, we are going to talk about how you're going to face off against superior elephant types. And for the purpose of that, we are going to select uh, the Ptolemids against the Moria Samraja with the best elephant unit type in the game, the Morian Royal Elephants. They are 48 elephants and they are using the Indian Armored Elephant Entity, which is the best in the game. They do have 900 HP. And of course, that unit mass of 330, which we discussed earlier. And we are going to face off against them using African Elephants. Now, African Elephants are not that powerful in comparison. And they are only 18 Elephants in the unit. Uh, they do have significantly lower HP and unit mass. So they will not win that engagement in a one-on-one. -on -one. However, once again, you kind of want to use that local superiority in order to gain an advantage. And the way you do this is you pretty much select a unit that is amazing against elephants, like the Pelta Spikemen over here. They do have a bonus of 25 versus elephants. And for most of you who have seen my previous videos, you will understand that this not only increases their melee attack by 25, but also their weapon damage by 25. And so you are very quickly going to see how even this really low tier elephant unit can be used in order to assist your Pelta Spikemen combat a superior or the best elephant unit in the game. So without any further ado, let us hop right back into the battle and I will show you how I achieve this. All right, so here we are in the battle and I am going to deploy my elephants and pikemen in the order that I want them to be deployed. And the reason I am going to do this is I want these elephants, which are low tier elephants, they are going to kind of suffer against this Morian royal elephant with 48 men in the unit. However, the main purpose is to kind of stop their charge right as this elephant does have a respectable ability to do so keep in mind this unit has 900 hp whereas this unit has 800 hp so it's nothing to scoff at it's only a difference of 100 so they should be able to absorb the charge i haven't really tested this before with such an inferior elephant type so yeah i might be surprised but as per my estimation, they should not take a single casualty before my pikemen can get engaged. Immediately after my elephants have engaged the enemy elephants, I am going to charge in my pikemen, just a normal charge, and then activate the short pike phalanx ability, which will increase their damage against elephant units. And what you will see is that this Morian royal elephant will be absolutely destroyed. Let's go ahead and start the battle. All right, we are going to quickly move our army up ahead just to get a little bit closer. Keep in mind now we have two elephant units. So what's going to happen is that when they charge each other, well, what actually happens is this light elephant will end up being on this side and this heavier elephant will be on this side. So they will kind of swap positions. So you have to be aware of that. You don't want to get your pikemen uh, within charging distance. And uh, that's pretty much going to ruin the whole thing. So you want to pretty much time it like this. All right. I think I can go ahead and charge with the pikemen. And one good thing about this is that um, the pikemen are slower than the elephants. So they should be able to. And as you can see, the elephants haven't taken any damage. Meanwhile, our pikemen are slowly getting into range. And once they charge, we are going to activate that. So there we go. They have charged. All right. We are going to activate our pike phalanx formation. Pass forward over here. Our pikemen have taken a bit of damage. But as you can see, the Morian elephants are already absolutely destroyed. And we have just like that. So simply won the battle by just losing about 18 pikemen. Of course, we haven't killed that many elephants. They have retreated before. You know, they could fight to the death and that's because elephants typically tend to have low morale. However, losing just 18 Peltas Spikemen in exchange for about 20 of the best elephant units in the game is a fair trade-off. I mean, we killed more elephants than we even lost Spikemen. And these Spikemen are fairly easily replaceable. Elephants, on the other hand, can easily be hunted down. And uh, yeah, that's one way you can deal with elephant units. 
Uh, I do see a lot of other players using a lot of missiles against elephants. Like, you know, you can technically use archers to use flaming shot in order to help this uh, elephant unit kind of go panicking. However, the way panicking works in the game right now, uh, the unit doesn't do any friendly damage as far, as far as I have noticed. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Comment down in the comment section if you have witnessed otherwise. But me personally, I haven't seen any elephant in a panic mode uh, destroy its own friendly troops. And I wish that was true because that would be kind of historically accurate. A lot of battles were lost that way when elephants kind of ran into their own troops. However, it doesn't happen in this game. And another thing I would uh, say is that you can use javelin type units and javelin type units are really good against elephants uh, because they get a plus 10 bonus to damage versus large which includes cavalry and elephants. However, the thing with javelin units is that it's hard to kind of use them against elephant units in my opinion. I mean, some of you might be better at using them. Uh, you will need a lot of javelins. I mean, javelins typically have about 22 damage. Add to that another 10. So you're looking at 32 damage to take down 900 of a single entity of an elephant, right? So if you're looking at 30 damage approximately versus 900, and if you divide that, you have 90 divided by 3, which means... Uh, 30 you need 30 javelins to kill a single elephant right and uh, yeah by the time you throw 30 javelins uh, that elephant unit reaches your javelin men you are in trouble but what you can do is you can have that typical front line of you know pikemen and javelins in behind to kind of support and uh, that could work however you are going to deal a lot of friendly damage that way not too much Another way is you can use the similar strategy, but keep in mind, you know, with elephant engagement, things tend to get really messy. As you can see, there's no clear definition of where the enemy elephants are and where our own elephants are. So you are going to deal a lot of friendly damage by using javelin units against elephant units. And one of the reasons I wouldn't really use missile troops against elephant units uh, is because you are wasting a lot of potential damage in trying to kill a single unit of elephants whereas you can cause a lot more damage to other easier targets to take out i mean if you use 30 javelins to kill a single elephant you have 48 elephants here so you just do 30 times 48 for simplicity simplicity sake i'm going to do 30 times 50 right and that would be 1,500 javelins, that is insane. You know, with that many javelins, you can pretty much destroy an entire front line of enemy units, right? Versus, you know, dedicating all of that to elephants. This, as you can see, is the easiest way to deal with elephant units. I mean, the best counter to the, one of the best units in the game, without any doubt, is obviously the same of that unit. And as you can see, our elephants, even though they are significantly lower quality, could deal with the high quality elephants that the Mauryans have and these elephants are fairly generic even to factions that don't own these elephants in their core roster they are easily available as mercenaries and AOR units so if ever you're facing off against a faction with good elephant units uh, you can go for this strategy in order to you know, counteract them most of the time what's going to happen with AI is that elephants are not going to be used on the flanks as opposed to human players such as myself who kind of like to use elephants on the flanks and then use them to kind of rear charge into the enemy front lines. What the AI typically tends to do is send elephants right into the center of your army. And in that scenario, yes, I would recommend using that front line with javelin combination. However, what you can also do is just, you know, mirror that elephant unit. Keep a, uh, uh, keep a bunch of uh, light elephants in the front in order to charge against that elephant unit. And then you're going to release your javelins because that's going to be better. You're not going to disrupt your front lines. And, uh, you know, you pretty much stop. I mean, your own elephants are going to take a bit of friendly fire from the javelins. Uh, meanwhile, your front line, especially if you do have some unit like these Peltas pikemen, can quickly charge up to that elephant 
and deal some damage. Alright, so for those of you who do want to see how you can counter an elephant unit on the front lines, this is one example. It might not go so well as the previous example uh, or the previous tactic that I used. However, for the sake of those of you who would like to know how to use uh, frontline units to kind of counter elephant units this is one way to do it and for that we are going to face off again versus the Morian royal elephants which are the best elephant units in the game in my humble opinion and we are going to use the antigonidae and we are going to use turio spears they are fairly cheap units and have a decent attack versus elephant units they do have the expert charge defense as well as well as they do have javelins a single javelin rather and uh, 300 men a unit each which means 600 javelins and we are going to have three pelta stay in the in the rear to support them while they are engaged with the elephants and uh, one of the reasons as you can see this elephant costs 4600 and if you count our own units it's about the same price however keep in mind that even though the price is the same you are taking up five slots to deal with a single elephant unit which means the enemy will have 19 other units to deal with your 15 units so they are going to get a superiority in that department however if you are able to engage the elephants earlier on and then free up these units for the battle then it's always good to like a another good strategy that you could use against elephant units so without any further ado once again we're going to hop into the battle and i will show you all how this is done all right welcome to the battle as you can see i have my thurio spears in front these are one of my favorite units for screening the enemy uh, for screening the enemy as they do prevent uh, they are fairly useful unit in my opinion one of my favorites especially when i use pike based armies as most of you have seen in my previous video uh, they kind of absorb i mean you should use this strategy they kind of absorb a lot of the missile damage and they're pretty easily uh, replaceable units they are only third class population units and they have some fairly respectable defensive stats However, as you can see, I usually like to spread them out in order to screen better, in order to entice more of the enemy missile units to kind of fire at these units while adequately protecting my second line of ranged infantry. However, in this case, I'm not going to do so because, you know, they are extremely light in comparison to this elephant unit. So what's going to happen is if this elephant unit actually charges into the Thurio 4 i they're going to go straight across and they are going to kind of get into range or within melee attacking distance of my Peltaste and that would be a disaster. So the way you increase the mass of your unit, kind of, right, is by increasing the depth of your unit so that's pretty much what i'm going to do i am going to increase the depth a little bit and uh, you don't have to w worry about trying to imitate the depth of the enemy elephants because what's going to happen is that this uh, couple of elephants in the center are going to engage this unit and then they are going to get somewhere in about a little bit deeper somewhere over there and then the whole unit is going to stop and kind of get registered into combat and what's going to happen with the units on the flank is that they are going to kind of wrap around this unit. And uh, that's pretty much what you're going to see. So let's quickly go ahead and start the battle. We are going to move our troops up ahead a little bit. And over here we do want to put the Pelta stay into a position to kind of fire at the elephants. Move them slightly ahead, maybe perhaps up to there pretty comfortable with that we are going to fast forward over here and we are going to now slow down the battle as you can see they have thrown about 600 javelins and that's not done an ounce of damage and now pretty much soon enough you will see the elephants have stopped there now they are getting into that combat and very soon this unit is going to get destroyed if my pelta state don't help out However, the Pelta stay out over here. And we are going to throw javelins at the elephants. So this is great. As you can see, we are losing quite a few men. However, we have killed just two elephants with a single volley of uh, three Pelta stay, as you can see. However, this will rack up. 
And as you can see, the elephants are losing now decisively. And I guess with just one more volley, they should kind of start to waver and retreat. And as you can see, yeah, we have won. This is a fairly viable strategy, you know. And if I do continue the battle, we will have killed all the elephants with this strategy. We don't have to chase them down. And yeah, pretty much it is a viable strategy. And uh, as you can see, I'll end the battle. We have lost about 78 men, which is uh, fairly okay. I mean, we just uh, had, uh, you know, we killed all the elephants, 48 elephants and lost 78 Turio Furai. And I'm okay with that. However, we have, uh, you know, inflicted some friendly fire as the elephants have only killed 61 of our theory of Ori. Meanwhile, we have killed 17 of our own men. Uh, it's, a, it's a good trade-off. I mean, 78 theory of Ori versus, of course, the best elephant unit in the game. However, in my personal humble opinion, the previous tactic is a lot better if you can afford to do so. However, without any further ado, I think that is it for elephants and hope you all learned a lot from this video and, and uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you liked the video, then please like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love.